Good morning and welcome to a quick bulletin from the Angry Astronaut. And I guarantee this one's going to be a lot more quick than my usual bulletins that are 10 to 15 minutes. Once again, please like, please subscribe to this channel. I'll tell you, we are so close to that 100,000 right now. Just over 4,000 subscribers to go. Okay, so uh, yeah, lots of great news coming from NASA, at least in terms of their budgetary allotments as of late until this year, until some recent comments were made indicating that there may very well be a substantial cutback in NASA funding in 2024. Now, it may only be a minor cutback, or it may just stabilize the amount of money that the uh, the American government is currently spending on space exploration, space science, etc. But even if the money remains stable, it's going to put Artemis in a a world of hurt, and that's something that we really can't afford to have happen. So, I mean, what sort of alternatives do we have? All of us believe in budget cuts and believe that the government is spending entirely too much money on whatever programs and departments that they have. I mean, this government spends far more money than any other country on the planet, even though we are not obviously the most populous country on the planet. Why is this the case? Well, that would take much, much longer than this video has. But let's go back to the priority that the government has placed on space exploration and the space program in general since we won the race to the moon with the Soviets. Regardless of how much we may be overspending on SLS, the visual evidence of how little the U.S. government spends on space compared to what they used to do back in the 1960s is absolutely startling. This is a percentage, as you can see, of the federal budget, and the difference is absolutely ridiculous. When we thought that we were in danger of losing the race to the moon to the Soviets, the amount of effort, the amount amount of funding that was plunged into the space program was absolutely colossal, and we haven't come anywhere near that. I mean, less than 25%, and in most cases, less than one-eighth of what we were doing during the time of Apollo. Why? Why was beating the Russians to the moon the only thing that mattered when it came to NASA? Now, of course, all of you know that I am a huge advocate for removing the enormous cost per launch that SLS represents, but that doesn't remove the fact that SLS, even if we tripled the number of rockets that we are currently planning to launch per year, it still wouldn't even come close to touching what we were doing during the time of Apollo. If it took that kind of funding in order to get us to the moon the first time, what in the name of God? God makes us think that we're going to be successful with a more ambitious plan to go back to the moon to stay this time with much less funding. It really doesn't make any sense. And although I advocate that SLS and the cost of Artemis be pared back and made more efficient, and perhaps that should be a condition of maintaining NASA spending at the levels that they're requesting right now, Obviously, what they're requesting is not that unreasonable compared to other departments of this government. So where should this money come from? Well, strap yourselves in because I'm about to really piss off those on the extreme left and those on the extreme right. You might want to click off on this video if you are easily triggered. So what do we do? I mean, if we are to keep NASA funding where it needs to be, that is to say probably $27, $28 billion in 2024, not stable, not level, but instead an increase in order to keep up with the demands of Artemis, where are we going to get the money? Well, 
I think that probably what's going to be happening when it comes to budget cuts based on the history of the Republican Party in the past is the cuts are going to come from everything except the military. The Republicans generally, I've never known them anyway, at least not during my lifetime, to touch military spending. And I am all in favor of a strong military, very much so. However, I have to admit, things do look a little funny when our military spending exceeds what Russia and China combined spend and then some many, many billions of dollars more than what those two countries spend combined during a time of peace. We are not officially at war with anyone and yet we continue to spend the insane amount of money on defense that we spent when we had wars raging in Iraq and Afghanistan. But I'll tell you somewhere else that this money could come from. And once again, I'm not talking about a lot of money here. In order to give NASA the necessary funding that they say they're going to require in order to keep Artemis going, we're only talking a couple of billion dollars reduce Ukrainian aid by two or three percent. That's all you would need to do. And if you're the type of person that says that we need to give Ukraine all the money they need in order to defeat the Russians, regardless of how much that may be, if it takes a trillion dollars for Ukraine to defeat Russia, then that's what we're going to spend. You might want to click off this video because I'm probably going to be triggering you right now. Now, there's a story that's been circulating lately that claims that we've spent more money aiding Ukraine than we spent the entire time that we were assisting Afghanistan. Factcheck.org said that that was not true, and that is actually the case if you're talking about total overall aid. But if you're talking about U.S. military aid, it is actually true. And you can see from this chart right here just how much money has been spent on military military aid to the Ukraine. We're not talking about financial. We're not talking about humanitarian. We're talking about flat out military assistance to the Ukraine since the war began. And by the way, even this figure is inaccurate. The current amount just in defense spending that the U.S. has funneled into Ukraine now totals $67.1 billion dollars dwarfing the non-defense spending that's been allocated to Ukraine of $46 billion. And incidentally, if I thought all of this money was going to lead to a Ukrainian victory over Russia, then I would be all for it but I don't see this money actually making that happen. I think it's going to take at least 10 times this much military aid. And the reason I believe this is because the most recent poll taken by the only independent poll agency remaining in Russia, which by the way is regarded as a foreign agent by the Russian government, probably not gonna be very long before those folks get arrested. Well, they show that 80% of the Russian public believe that if it means losing Crimea and Donetsk to Ukraine, in other words, losing the war, they don't want to pull out. They want Russia to pursue a peaceful solution, but they don't want to lose the war. They'd rather have it continue. That indicates to me that this war is nowhere near being finished and Russia is nowhere near to being defeated. Now, just as I believe in a strong defense, I also believe in supporting Ukraine in their war war of resistance against Russian aggression. However, I do find it to be a little bit funny that we are spending so much more money on military assistance to a country that is fighting a nation that didn't attack us during 9-11, as opposed to a country that was fighting a government that did attack us during 9-11. And yes, the Taliban definitely had something to do with that. Now look, I'm not saying that Ukraine is the only example of excessive government spending, but nevertheless, it demonstrates that the money is definitely there if we just look for it. So yeah, there's the bottom line. We just have not put 
any kind of priority on space exploration and space science ever since the time of the Apollo missions. There's just no priority on the part of the U.S. government to put any sort of significant spending into this. The amount that NASA gets is utterly paltry compared to what they used to receive at the time that we thought we were in a race with the Russians. And the thing of it is, we are in a race that's even more important right now. And amazingly, even though they are being warned from every possible corner, the Congress is just too idiotic to figure it out. And that is, of course, China. China is in a position right now to establish control over the moon, the strategic advantage, the strategic high ground that it holds, and for a variety of different reasons in military strategy, and also the enormous advantages that it holds in terms of resources. Right now, China dominates the fields of rare metals and other important mining industries at the moment. They make a tremendous killing off of the fact that they absolutely dominate those industries. Those resources are also available on the moon, and we are on the cusp of just handing that over to them because we are too stupid to realize the importance of expanding out into the solar system and exploiting the resources that are available there. And that I'll tell you, exploiting the moon and exploiting space is something that everybody should support. Republicans should support it because it provides us with a clear competitive advantage over China and our enemies, at least traditional Republicans, what we understand Republicans to believe in. And on the other side of things, the left should support it because exploiting resources in space allows us to export our damaging mining and damaging heavy industry off of this planet as well. There's something in there for everybody, and yet nobody seems to have the brains to figure it out. Something needs to turn around. We don't need a budget cut on NASA right now. It will be absolutely crippling to the future of our ambitions in space. If you are an American citizen, please write your congressman or your senator and let them know how you feel about this matter before it's too late. And as always, stay angry about space.